Hey everyone, I made a quick hack of a game controller to test out an idea this weekend. What this is is a game controller that uh, you sit on and how you shift your weight and turn your body will control uh, the, the game character. So I have it set up right now so that the rotational axis is one to one. It's basically just like moving a mouse side to side and the uh, direction controls are relative, so if you put more weight on the front of this panel, uh, you go forward, and if you put more weight on the back, you go backward, and it works uh, for strafing as well. Note that I am also using the mouse in addition to this game controller. The environment requires me to turn more than 180 degrees to navigate, and there's really no way to do that with the, uh, the seat controller yet. So you can see how this thing uh, would work to control a first-person shooter, and you might be saying, oh, well, that's silly, uh, you know, WASD already works perfectly well, there's no way this could be faster. And that's true. However, there are some circumstances where you might want to have your body control the motion. Uh, one, it frees up your hand to do something else, to interact with the environment. And also, this works better for uh, virtual reality. And so I'll be talking about some of the VR work that I've been doing at Valve and uh, this controller may tie into that. I built this controller by uh, combining a cheap digital bathroom scale and an Xbox 360 controller. And I took the scale apart and noticed that it had four force sensors at each corner, and the sensors were routed to a, a main PCB with the display readout. So at first I was thinking what I would do is add a microcontroller to this and measure each channel separately and then use the microcontroller to figure out where your center of gravity is on the scale just by uh, calculating the ratios between the sensors. Um, but then I realized there was actually a much quicker, cheaper way to do this uh, just with a single op amp. So each of the four force sensors has three wires coming out and I suspect they're built kind of like this but I'm not sure. And the three wires are arranged like so, and one resistance is fixed, and the other resistance changes when you put force on the, on the sensor. One of the main reasons to have a configuration like this is to compensate for temperature. So this resistor won't be affected by the force applied to it, but it will be affected by temperature, and this one will be affected by temperature and the force applied to it. So by effectively subtracting those two or taking the difference we can get just the force only and avoid temperature effects. So the trick here is that the change in resistance is very low probably just uh, maybe a couple ohms and these re uh, resistors have a, a base resistance of about a kilo ohm so we're talking about a very very small percentage. So the trick is how do you amplify that small change and that tiny tiny change in resistance uh, to a voltage big enough to give to our game controller board. So this is the circuit that I came up with, and um, there's nothing too special here, but we can use uh, the arrangement of these sensors to our advantage. So since they're arranged in a cross pattern, what we can do is say arbitrarily that one of these uh, opposed set of sensors will be fore and aft, and the other pair will be left and right. So that whenever the ratio changes between these opposed sensors, we'll know that that's a, a fore and aft input. So this, this circuit here represents uh, one axis. And what we do is we set up the sensors in a, a Wheatstone bridge, and this bridge is designed to measure very small changes in resistance. And what we do is we put the forward sensor on the top half of the bridge and the reverse sensor in the bottom half of the bridge. So an increase in resistance here will lower this voltage, or a decrease in resistance here will uh, raise this voltage. And we put these into an op amp uh, with the positive or the uh, non-inverting and inverting inputs such that the two the differences are, are summed. The important thing is that the total amount of weight applied to the scale doesn't really matter. What we're only interested in is relative difference between these sensors. So in the original scale application they actually summed all these together in a positive way and we're actually taking just the differential difference uh, between these, between two uh, pairs of sensors. The Xbox controller, uh, before I took it apart, I measured the voltages on the uh, thumbstick pot, and it appeared that the uh, pot was supplied with 0 and 1.6 volts, and its you know, resting point was about 0.8. So I guess they optimized this circuit for battery power, uh, being a 1.6 volt circuit. So what I did is I added a, another pot to the op-amp circuit to control the offset, 
So this will feed a little bit of current into or draw a little bit out of this line, which will change the uh, resting state value of the whole system. And this is also a pot in my uh, uh, circuit so that I can control the gain. So here's what the whole thing looks like. Uh, it's just one op amp, and I used an LM324, which I've been uh, accused of using these, even though they're apparently the worst op amp in production. But you know, for low frequency applications like this, it's fine. And there's the uh, gain and offset pots for each axis and the wires going into the board here. The mouse sensor is also a quick and dirty hack. I just cut up an old ball mouse and sliced away the case except for one axis, one roller, and then put a piece of rubber tubing on it and mounted it here so that it would contact the, uh, the bottom of this uh, Lazy Susan bearing. So after just a little bit of tweaking, it was actually quite playable. And I suspect the next um, set of improvements would be to actually add the microcontroller to do auto zeroing. So you could just sit down and press a button and have it remember that center of gravity as zero. And then your movements relative to that would be counted as inputs. Currently, you have to shift your weight a little bit carefully on this to get to the scale's actual center point uh, because there is no auto zeroing function. Also, I imagine with better signal processing, um, discrete movements could be detected better. So instead of just doing an absolute sort of one-to-one uh, -one, uh, relationship between center of mass and control input, uh, there could be different curves. You know, you might figure out a logarithmic curve why it might work better. Right now it's linear. And uh, I suspect there's quite a bit more that can be done once a microcontroller is added. Okay, see you next time. Bye.